Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about floor ceiling reflections because they're kind of not discussed too much. We, we mainly talk about the lateral domain, the sidewall reflections, but <clears throat> floor and ceiling reflections are really critical. So we, we need to look at this area and, and let's take a peek and see what we can find. Pressure versus reflection. These are the two areas that we have to always be concerned about, low frequency pressure and then the reflections from the boundary surfaces within our room. Those two domains that, that we have to work with, just like containment and management, those are the other two variables that we have to work with. So we have pressure and reflections, containment and management. Those, those are our four areas of concern. We know in North America, most of our ceilings are eight foot, so it's a very high area of pressure. Because eight foot, if you do some calculations, you realize that you have some uh, wavelengths that uh, won't fit in that eight foot dimension, and, and that's uh, really important, and we'll talk about those in a minute. So it's an area of very high pressure. It's also an area of first reflections. People think that the sidewalls are uh, your, your area of first reflections, and they are in terms of lateral domain, but this is a vertical domain. We have quite a few domains we have to look at. So it's a area of first reflections for the vertical domain. Why is that the case? Well, well, let's go back to our domains. We have vertical, horizontal, and front to back. We have vertical, horizontal, and then front to back in our room. So we have these three dimensions of, of sound fields that we have to be concerned about. You're sitting on the floor. You can't really get much closer to a surface than the one you're sitting on. So that's a reflection point. That's a boundary surface with a reflection point. So we have to be very careful with that. Ceiling, you're sitting right below it. In North America, most of our ceilings are eight foot, so that can be an issue too. So we have to be careful with ceiling to floor reflections, and those are our closest ones. They actually arrive at the listing position first, um, but we're not, we don't talk about them too much, but they're very, very important. Why are they important? Because first off, the pressure levels on the eight foot ceilings here, here's some distortions. Here's some frequencies that distort. 284, 20, 560 with an 8-foot ceiling. These are right in the mid-range of our vocals. I go into a lot of rooms and I listen, and most of the rooms, the vocals are never right. They're never natural. Uh, they're colored. There's a lot of coloration in the vocals. So your 8-foot ceilings are, are really a good reason for this. What's a good ceiling height? Well, 11 really is a minimum. 14 is ideal. 14 is a really great height for a drum room for you guys to do a lot of live recording out there. Keep, keep these two dimensions in mind. This is kind of a minimum, and this is ideal. So somewhere in that range for a drum room is good, and then each room also has its dictates and requirements. So keep the pressure <clears throat> and, and re increase the ceiling height in your rooms if you can, because it's a real critical area. What are our options when it comes to uh, ceiling treatments? <clears throat> Excuse me. One of our options is absorption and one is diffusion. Those are really the only two that we have to work with. So let's look at absorption. You have to choose the right rate and level of absorption. It's not just one, one material works in one area. You have to be very careful of this. You have to be very careful of the rate and level of absorption you use on the ceiling. You have to be very careful of the rate and level of absorption you use on the sidewalls. Diffusion is another option. You have to be very careful once with the sequence that you choose because it's distant dependent. So a balance between absorption and diffusion is a good combination. We use that a lot in our rooms. We're, we're building a new room in Hollywood, California right now where we're now located. And we're using a combination of two-dimensional diffusion and absorption. What does that do? Well, with, with uh, low frequency uh, management and low frequency absorption, you get rid of those pressure issues that the uh, eight foot ceilings cause. And then you also, with diffusion, manage the reflections in it. So watch your, your ceiling heights because they're directly responsible for what you're hearing at the listening position. And they arrive at the listening position first. So in graphic one, you can see the ceiling to floor reflection is very, very critical and very, very important. So it must be treated. And then in graphic two, we, we see the wavelengths that are affected by these eight, nine, 10, 11 foot distances. 
And you can see by looking at the wavelength chart why 11 and 14 is a, is a good, good ceiling height to work with. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up so I know that it had value to you. And please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Alternatively, if there are other topics that you wish to discuss, discuss or see discussed in a video presentation, send me a, an email, info at acousticfields.com, and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you. I release a new uh, video about every week, so stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.